Hi, it's Lori from Dakota Relics. Come join me as I travel around the area searching for treasures that I can buy and then flip for a profit. You'll never know what I find unless you follow me. Come on, let's get shopping. Good morning. I am going to tell you guys what has sold as far as Christmas items since Thanksgiving. It kind of, um, Christmas items will sell all year long. Uh, these are just the ones that have sold since Thanksgiving. Uh, starting out with number one, and you'll see the photos in the corner there. Um, this is a retired piece from Department 56. They're called Silhouettes and they're like all white bisque. People collect these and this one happened to be, I believe, retired from 1999. He's called the Old World Santa. I picked up a large lot of these um, silhouettes at an auction sale. They averaged out to be about $5 a piece. He sold for $89. Um, shipping was expensive. It was $20.27. And after taking away the listing fees and the fees from Etsy, I profited $54.83 from this piece. The second item, a holiday book tin. Um, I'm not sure how old this is, probably from the 80s or 90s. It's, it was really cute. Didn't make a lot of money off of this. I picked it up for a dollar at a thrift store. Sold for $27. Shipping was $10.19. And minus the fees, I did profit $13.11. Um, the next item I bought um, on my road trip to Beersford, there's a really cute antique store down there called Redesign. I did find quite a few things there, um, including some vintage Christmas items. Uh, these are adorable, made in Japan, probably from the 1950s, uh, pixie elves, but they're with a kitchen design or a kitchen theme. I did pay up for these a bit. I paid $6 each, uh, $12 total, of course. Sold for $52, shipping was $8.19, fees $5.20, I profited $26.61. The next item, um, Trio of Angels. They're still in their original box. I picked these up at an estate sale for $2, probably made in the 1950s, and it was marked um, made in Western Germany. So this Trio of Angels picked up for $2, sold for $57 with postage and fees deducted, my profit on these were $44.87. A lot of times vintage Christmas will sell solely because people remember these items from their grandma's house or, the, you know, like their mom's house, but somebody else got them or they just were misplaced. And so they see the item and it's a nostalgic thing. And they're willing to pay quite a bit just to get that piece of childhood back. Um, the paper mache Santa, I did get it at an auction sale. Nope, I'm sorry, I got this at an estate sale. He's about 14 inches tall and he was made in Mexico. There were quite a few listed and he did sit for a long time. I actually think I had him listed from last Christmas, but um, I just keep my listings on because I think that they eventually will sell. So I picked this guy up for $7. Um, he did sell for $50. And after postage and fees, I made $27.81. The little glass, um, art glass Christmas tree, they had, it had ornaments, like um, hand-blown ornaments on it. Picked it up at a thrift store for $2. Sold it for $40. After fees and shipping, I made $25.65 on this. I'm not sure if it was that old. When I don't know how old something is, I can list it as vintage as long as I say that I believe it was prior to 2000. And I think this was probably prior to 2000, but I can't be sure. The Christmas barn, if you remember in the video when I went to the Sioux City Goodwill bins, I picked this up at the Goodwill bins. Um, so it's kind of hard to know how much I actually paid for it. I'm going to say about $5. It did sell for $52. Um, shipping and fees deducted, I made $32.86.
this next set I picked up, um, it's called a Fontanini Nativity Set. It's made in Italy, and I did buy this at an estate sale. I did have to bargain with them a bit because not all of the pieces were there, but it was a large, it was a large set. But um, it is like more of a collector's item. People would buy these pieces yearly. Each year a new piece would come out. Um, I did pay up for this. I paid $55 for the set. Most of them had boxes, not all of them, but most of them were in their original boxes. I sold it for $199. So after shipping and fees, I netted $105.23. I think that's a pretty good profit. So this little, cute little trio of uh, Christmas trees, the smaller ones are salt and pepper. The larger one is... <laughs> It's hard to explain, but if you look real close, you can see little holes in that Christmas tree. And those are for toothpicks. And you would put like an hors d'oeuvre on the end of the toothpick and put the toothpick in the Christmas tree. Um, bought this at a garage sale for a dollar, all three pieces for a dollar, and it sold for $45. Uh, made in Japan, probably the 50s. My profit on this was $35.25. I think the snow flocking kit was probably my favorite item that I found at the bins. I was unsure if this would even sell. Kind of surprised when I got home and did some research and it did, um, there were some listed on the internet for sale. Again, not sure, I mean, it hardly weighed anything and at the bins you pay by the pounds, so I estimated that this cost me $3. And I sold it for 45. And after fees and shipping, I netted a profit of about $28.98. The thing about this is that I got a wonderful review on Etsy for this. Um, the man that purchased it said that he and his father had a set just like this when he was a kid, and they would flock people's Christmas trees. This flocking kit would actually attach to your vacuum cleaner um, of course, on probably on the reverse mode, and it still had the the colored tablets that you could change the flocking colors to, and he was thrilled to get it. I love reviews like that because it makes me feel good that it actually was a piece somebody you know really cherished. The little nightlight I bought a box at an auction sale, and it had. I think maybe about six of these night lights in it, along with other things. So I kind of averaged the price out of each night light at 50 cents. You could, there's a little divot in the top of the lampshade, and it was on all of the, the lights. And what you would do is put a drop of perfume in there or a couple of drops of perfume. So it was kind of like, um, you know, one of the first diffusers or uh, aromatherapy things probably from the 50s or 60s this one was all white but it did have like christmas um i think it had like a santa claus on it like kind of embossed in the white ceramic so 50 cents sold it for 35 after fees and shipping i made 20 dollars and 61 cents the cups of christmas tea I actually picked up three of these at Goodwill for $2 um, a set, and they sold almost instantly. I mean, it was within days they sold. So trying to figure out, so two or three sets at um, $2 each, of course, is $6. I sold them each for 20 or $39 a set, and after fees and shipping, my profit on these three little cups and saucers were $117. Um, kind of surprised me. I didn't know that they would sell so quickly or so, or, you know, for such a profit. So that was a good pickup. I love this little bow tie, a Western bow tie. It is so nice. It just screams 1950s. It's made by the Ormond Company. I ended up getting this um, at a garage sale, picked it up for a dollar. 
sold it for 30 and of course shipping was very light. So I ended up making a profit of $22.91 on this. The Garfield ornament. Um, I bought him um, on a Facebook marketplace. It wasn't, I didn't even know he was in the box. I bought a whole box of things for I think $35. So I'm actually saying that I paid nothing for him because I didn't even know he was in there. I have made my profit back on that box probably three times already. Um, I sold him for $25. With shipping and fees, I ended up making $18.94 off of him. Oh, the little poinsettia, it's not, it wasn't so little. It was probably about 18 inches in diam diameter, but the poinsettia um, doily did sell. I paid $1.50 at a thrift store, sold it for 15. And yeah, not a huge profit, but a profit of $8.86. The thing is, I mean, the amount of work that goes into those pieces, I would never sell it. Uh, I would never, if I made it, I wouldn't sell it for $15. And I think it might be a kind of a dying art. You don't see it a lot. These doilies look great. If you're into those vintage ceramic Christmas trees, they make a great, um, like a display piece to set those on. So they, they actually sell quite well. So I pick them up whenever I can find them. They're usually very reasonable. The Napco little figurines called Christmas Joy picked that up at a garage sale for $2. Um, I always look for Napco items. Um, there's a couple other brands that are made in Japan that are, were made after World War II. Um, Japan was a, a super importer after World War II. But after doing some research on the internet, they, they sell for way more than I thought. Um, so I did sell this little tiny Christmas figurine entitled Christmas Joy uh, for $52. And after shipping was nothing because it was so lightweight. So after fees and shipping, I made a profit of $41.16. This lot of five Christmas angels were kind of picked up like sporadically through the season. Maybe some at a garage sale, maybe one I found at, um, an, you know, that was inside of a auction box. They were kind of mismatched. The two littlest ones or the two medium sized ones were matched. And I believe those were home co angels. I just let, you know, listed them all together. I'm going to say I probably spent $350, $375 on them, sold them for $35, and after shipping, made a profit of $22.38. I know this next item, uh, kind of a strange thing. I happened to go to a church rummage sale, picked this box of old Christmas lights up for $0.25. Cents. Uh, didn't make a lot of profit on them. I just thought they were neat. People will even use that just as a, a decoration, not use the lights at all. Uh, so, uh, sold these for $19 and after fees and, um, shipping only made $6 and 46 cents, but at least they didn't go into the garbage. Somebody really did want them. And then one of the last items just sold this like on Friday, I believe it is a Pipka memories of Christmas. It's a 1999 retired piece. Um, Etsy has uh, this program where if you sell over 200 items or over $10,000, you have to be included in their marketing program. <clears throat> and I, a lot of people quit Etsy because of this. I don't find that it's a huge deal. Once in a while, something will sell from marketing. And what that is, is Etsy puts out their own ads. And if it sells through one of their ads, instead of someone just going on Etsy and looking at an item, they take like 20% instead of the normal eight. I don't sell a lot of things through marketing, but I would say this year, probably 10 items have sold. So after the marketing fees, shipping fees, everything, I did pick this up for $5 at that same auction. I, I bought a lot of the Department 56 silhouettes um, my profit on this item was $96.96. .96. I don't know. As far as the marketing, 
I'm not going to quit Etsy over it for sure because I don't have good luck selling on eBay. I like Etsy better. Uh, the, the thing with a lot of these items, they were actually from last year's Christmas that I listed. It eventually will sell. And surprisingly, Christmas sells even in the summer. Even in the middle of the summer, people will buy Christmas items. So I, I love selling vintage Christmas items. Um, when it's one of the biggest things I look for during summer rummage sales or garage sales that I go to. Chris, vintage Christmas sells well. So that kind of wraps it up. Um, these are just the Christmas items I've sold since Thanksgiving. I've sold a lot of other items. Um, check out my Etsy store. Make sure you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I appreciate it. All for now and have a great holiday. Bye.